Hello again everyone, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. My name is Mars, and today we're going to be talking about the new NeoVision system that arrived in the Japanese version of Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, because it's a system we should be aware about before it arrives in the Global Edition. So, as you likely know, I don't play the Japanese version myself, and most of my viewers don't either. Many of them play Global Edition, so this is to kind of show you the direction that units are going in in the Japanese version of the game so that you yourself can plan for how to approach it for when it arrives in global because it certainly will arrive in global uh, it's just a matter of when and uh, there may be some tweaks to it but this video will go over the basic system for neo vision units so the first thing we want to dive into is the ex plus system so traditionally when you have a unit, uh, the way that you have to level them up is to level them and then when they hit their level cap, you awaken them, it brings them to a new base rarity and then you can level them again and it, you can awaken them again and, it, and so on and so forth until you reach maximum level at maximum rarity. The Neo Vision system kind of follows in spirit to that but it is a little bit different. So. If you're using an old unit that currently has a 7 star form and you are awakening it to a Neo Vision unit, um, it does, it, it functions a little bit differently. So in order to awaken a character to a Neo Vision character, you have to have it at 7 stars and you have to have their STMR. So in the case of the Tifa that you can see here on the screen, it is required for her to be level 120 and she has to have her, her STMR earned. She doesn't have to have it equipped, of course, but you have to have earned it in order to awaken her to a Neo Vision. Um, once you have her at 120 with her STMR, then you can use uh, 25 fragments and one of the common pearls, and that's what I'm going to call them. I don't know the official name, but I'm going to call them common pearls. Um, if you use 25 fragments and one common pearl, you can awaken her to a Neo Vision, which I'm going to also shorthand and call EX plus zero. So all this does is increase her base stats and make her into a Neo Vision rarity unit. From that point forward, you don't have to level her anymore. Uh, you don't have to do anything crazy with, with her. Um, she doesn't start over at a new level. Her level cap doesn't go up. Uh, but your next way to invest in her is with these EX levels. So EX plus zero is what I'm calling it, is what takes you from seven star into an eight star or your Neo Vision form. And then from there, you can invest additional fragments and common pearls into the character to unlock further EX pluses. And so with Tifa and with other pre-existing seven star units, you need 50 fragments and two common pearls to give them EX plus one. For EX plus two, you need 75 fragments and three common pearls. And then for EX plus three, you need 100 fragments with three common pearls and one heavenly pearl, which is the rarer pearl variety. So um, each of these EX levels gives you a different set of perks. So EX plus zero doesn't give you much other than a stat increase and it changes your base rarity. But if you get an EX plus one, this unlocks your Brave Shift ability. So what a Brave Shift ability is, is it's an ability that you can use in battle. It's a toggle switch sort of thing that when you go into your character to activate their abilities, you see it at the very bottom and it enables them to shift forms and it actually changes their sprite. So. Um, in the example here, you can see Red 13 is, is kind of facing backwards to his enemy. Um, he's shifting into a different stance when you activate his Brave Shift, and it unlocks a whole new set of abilities. It even changes their limit break and their limit break animation. So um, Brave Shifting is basically a way to get a whole new unit available to you. Um, so this is the most important step for you know investing in an EX character or, or a Neo Vision character is to is to get EX plus zero so that you can get the base rarity and then invest more shards and pearls to get EX plus one. So that unlocks the most valuable thing which is the Brave Shift. In addition to that when you get EX plus one it gives you a large increase to your base stats. It gives you the largest increase to your base stats um, of any of the EX plus awakenings. So for example, uh, I might do an EX plus one on Tifa, and this is an example, this isn't the real number because I don't have it on me, but you might get plus 60 attack base. So that's gonna have a large impact on her damage, 
But when you do EX plus two, which also gives a stat increase, or plus three, which also gives a stat increase, each one gives less. So the first one might give 60, but the second one might only give 45, and the last one might only give 30. Um, as an example. So EX plus one gives you the greatest amount of value and it's good too because it's one of the easiest ones to get. EX plus two is the next stage in your character's evolution. Um, for seven star units that are made into Neo Visions, uh, they get this moderate stat increase only. Uh, they don't get any additional benefits. If the character is a Neo Vision base character, such as the new CG Cloud, he gets an STMR Moogle when he gets the EX plus two. And this is important because you don't get the STMR by fusing duplicates like you do with seven star units. Uh, you do need to Moogle them. So being able to EX plus two your Neo Vision base characters is helpful because it gives you that STMR Moogle. Now EX plus three, for seven star base characters, uh, that's going to give them a small increase in base stats and nothing else. So really for pre-existing units, you really just need them at EX plus one and that's quite easy to get, especially since with Tifa and Red 13, as we'll talk about, you can actually get all the shards and pearls you need through the event that came with them. But uh, for your Neo Vision characters, you get a large benefit um, because you get a vision card if you get a Neo Vision based character to EX plus three, which requires the largest amount of shards and the largest amount of pearls. Um, and yeah, the Neo Vision card that you get for getting EX plus three is a unique one to that character. So Cloud will unlock a very special vision card that is much more powerful than all the other ones because it's super hard to get. Um, so just keep that in mind is that for the for the Neo Vision characters you get extra perks for the EX pluses for the uh, seven star characters that are Neo Visions they only get the stat increases with EX plus two and plus three so one other thing to note is that Neo Vision base characters also have different requirements for getting the EX plus so with Tifa we only needed 50 frags and one common pearl in order to uh, get her to EX plus one. Oh, I misspoke. She needs 50 fragments and two common pearls, and common pearls are pretty easy to get. They are common after all, but the new CG Cloud needs 50 fragments and one heavenly pearl to get EX plus one. And heavenly pearls, as we'll talk about, are much harder to come by, um, but they are, you know, they are obtainable. And uh, like I said before, this will unlock Cloud's uh, brave his uh, brave shift ability. So this is like the minimum you want to shoot for, and it also gives him the largest stat increase. Uh, Cloud requires another 100 fragments and two heavenly pearls, the rarer ones, to get EX plus two, and then 200 fragments and two additional heavenly pearls for his EX plus three. So this probably doesn't mean a lot to you yet, so we're gonna talk about how you actually get those materials. Um, because, yeah, you're like, okay, 200 fragments, two heavenly pearls, what does that actually mean? For character fragments, you have to either earn them through events or login rewards, or you have to turn in duplicates of that character in order to get those fragments. So, with the example here of Tifa that I have a screenshot of, uh, she, in her five or six star base form, you can exchange her for 25 fragments for Tifa, and one common pearl, which the the people with good memories will recall that that's all she needs to hit EX plus zero. So if you have one spare Tifa, you are able to get her to a Neo Vision form. Uh, but like I said, the good news is through her event um, that they have in JP, they're basically giving you this for free. Um, a seven star unit can be exchanged for twice as many fragments, that's 50, and twice as many common pearls. Uh, the only drawback to this is that you get 50 fragments and two pearls regardless of how many dupes you have fused into that character for their STMR. So that is a little bit of a drawback, um, understandably, so just keep that in mind when you're managing your 7 star units that you have now. Uh, consider not getting duplicate STMRs if you don't think you're going to actually use them because you may wish you had those extra 5 star base characters to exchange for fragments.
Now, when you trade in a Neo Vision base unit, which right now is only the new CG Cloud, um, you get 50 fragments and one Heavenly Pearl. And the Heavenly Pearls are the rarest ones to get. Um, they're gonna take you the longest to grind out. It's your most significant investment to get those fragments and heavenly pearls. So when you pull duplicates, uh, you're gonna be happy to see them. Uh, fragments and pearls can also be obtained in shops, login rewards, you know, that's helpful. In addition to that, um, where we normally have like the ticket exchange shop or things like that from banners or the, the summon banner coin shops, uh, they added another shop for Neovision summons or Neovision units where you can purchase shards and pearls for lapis. So the good news is if you're sitting on a large treasure trove of lapis, you are able to buy shards to power up your characters further. And like I said, the minimum that you really want to shoot for with the uh, Neovision characters is to get to EX plus one because that gives you your brave shift and the biggest boost in power. Anything you get beyond that is just a bonus. So that is the nice thing about this system that I'm seeing so far is that once you pull that character, so if I'm pulling for CG Cloud and I just pull one of him, then because of the event and the, the fragments and the pearls from the event, I'm gonna be able to get him to EX plus one no matter what, which unlocks his most important abilities through his, through his Brave Shift. So, so far, so good on that. Um, in addition to uh, these changes to the way that the units work, which I think are really good, I'm honestly excited about it, um, they did implement some changes to the summon pool, which is something that I was excited um, for and hoped for and largely predicted. It did pan out different than my prediction, of course, but uh, yeah, they did change the pool up a little bit, and please enjoy watching some summons while we talk about this, uh, some examples of this summon pool. Um, they did adjust the rainbow rate up to 10 uh, which is a very large increase. Uh, that means you're going to be getting, on average, twice as many rainbows, which is a lot, um, unless you're me, in the which case two times zero rainbows is still zero. Um, but in general, this means you're going to be seeing loads more rainbows in your pulls, which I think is great, especially if you're transitioning to a NeoVision system. This 10% also increases or er, includes the 1% rate of summoning a NeoVision character. So on a banner where you're summoning and you could pull a NeoVision unit, it's going to be like 1% NeoVision, 9% rainbow rate, but overall five star base rarity or higher is going to come in at 10%. The four star pull rate is gonna be buffed by more than twice as much, up to 45% from 19, which is going to be helpful for new players so they can get some of those, those good TMRs that can help them get into the game faster. And then the three star summon rate is going to be dropped dramatically. Uh, currently in global, our blue pull rate is 76%. And in JP, it is being reduced to 45%, which is a huge relief. I think that's a, a great move. I think it's going to be super awesome. Looking forward to that. Now, if we want to look at sample banner rates for something that you can expect on um, future banners with NeoVision units, uh, these are the rates that are currently available for the NeoVision Cloud banner. Uh, these rates may adjust a little bit as more NeoVision characters are added to the summon pool, but as it is right now, NeoVision Cloud has a 1% pull rate, which I was dead on with that prediction, and I'm pretty happy about it, uh, because all you gotta do is pull one copy and you are set with a super, super powerful unit. Um, the other three featured rainbows on the FF7 Remake banner include Barrett, Tifa, and Red 13, each of which have a 1.5% pull rate, totaling a 3.5% banner rainbow pull rate, or a, oh no, 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 did I do that quick maths in my head right? Yeah, it's 4.5% <laughs> for banner rainbows. You can add in NeoVision Cloud, uh, which is a one, another 1%. One so it means on the whole, you're looking at 5.5% banner rainbow or higher pull rate, which I think is, I think that's good. Um, and your off banner rate is only four and a half percent for, uh, for other rainbows. So on the whole, I think these are really good pool changes. I'm excited to see how it comes into play with banners and future banners with more NeoVision units. So that's something to keep an eye out for. 
Um, the NeoVision base units also don't appear from EX tickets, and you cannot UOC NeoVision units. So what this means in global is that um, you are welcome to use your EX tickets at any time. You don't have to worry about socking them away for a microscopic chance of pulling a NeoVision unit. Um, and they also can't be UOC'd, so free, feel free to use UOCs on 7-star units, though I would recommend saving them for 7-star units that get NeoVision forms, because you can get additional fragments and pearls by using them correctly on the right 7-star units that get NeoVision forms. In addition to that, uh, NeoVision units can be pulled um, from any featured banner, so when Cloud's banner goes away and there's a new NeoVision banner, you will be able to pull the new CG Cloud on those banners so they don't go away like Summon Fests do in JP. Um, anytime there's a banner that you can pull a NeoVision featured unit on, you can also off banner other NeoVision characters, which is cool. And then whenever you summon a NeoVision base character, you also summon a Vision card to accompany them. Um, and this is the only way to get vision cards other than getting EX plus three on a NeoVision base character. So that's how you get your vision cards so far in the game is, is just through summoning NeoVision crystals. The good news is, is that they're not super overpowered. They're just helpful and they are good and they will eventually become best in slot items. But, uh, that's, that's pretty much how you get them. And overall, you know, I think they're a nice little add on the sprite work on them is very cool. And so I, you know, I, I think they're all right. Now, one of the other things that's a unique feature to the new NeoVision system is the brave skills. Now, brave skills look different from your typical skills. They are red skills as opposed to your skills that are, are kind of blue or otherwise, you know, kind of a cool color. These red hot, you know, warm skills, these are your upgradable skills that are exclusive to NeoVision units. And you use uh, a unique uh, item currency or, or item system. It's kind of like um, ability awakenings where you have to collect, you know, the, the appropriate NeoVision fragments or pieces in order to level up these abilities. So it genuinely is a lot like an ability awakening sort of system. The good news is, is that from what I could see, um, you can get everything that you need to level up these skills through events. I don't quite know the proportion of these that you get or how many you have to farm or how grindy it is because I haven't gotten that far in JP. But uh, on the whole, this is your your system for leveling up those those brave skills and that is another one of those things that makes these neovision characters kind of stand out so that's kind of a basic overview of the neovision system and how it works i think on the whole i'm pretty excited about this uh my initial knee-jerk reaction was like oh my god this looks so so expensive this is like whale territory in order to ex plus three anything you need so many duplicates of a unit and while that may be somewhat true, um, you get almost all of your benefit from an EX plus one, and that's something that you can get through the event if you already have the character at seven stars with their STMR. And you can UOC, you know, prisms and stuff like that that you might need. Honestly, I think it is a cool system. Um, at first, if some if you hear what somebody says and they're like, oh, you need like a dozen copies of a unit to max them out, it sounds bad, but let me reframe it for you. If you're taking a seven star character and converting them into a NeoVision character, you only need to EX plus one them in order to get all of their abilities in their entire kit. EX plus two and plus three is only stat pots. That's all it is. That's all you're missing out on for the seven star units that are going to NeoVisions. It is a steeper climb for the NeoVision base characters, of course, and they do give substantially better rewards for hitting EX plus two and EX plus three. But these characters are the ones that you're going to invest in over a longer period of time. And again, you get their whole kit at EX plus one and you get, um, the largest increase in stats. So uh, bottom line is, I think the system is going to be good. I think people are gonna need to think about it, kind of wrap their head around it, go ahead and give it a try, because it is it is brand new, it is a little bit overwhelming, but from what I've seen on the JP side of things, it is something to be excited about on the whole. Of course, we need to wait and see how available our material is going to be in the long run, um, how is this going to influence the difficulty of content, how, 
uh, consistently reliable are these NeoVision units going to be? How good are they? Are they going to get power creeped quickly? Those are a lot of considerations that we just don't know yet, but based on the information that we have now, it looks good to me. So with that, that concludes our uh, complete guide on the new NeoVision system in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. Please let me know what you think about this system down in the comments below. I'm really dying to know what you guys think because I know what I think. At first, I thought it was going to be terrible. I looked into it more. I've changed my mind completely. I'm excited about it. So please let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see everybody in the next video.